Mary Magdalene and even Mary the mother of Jesus could no longer be counted as in the same equation with other women on earth. What made them different? And listen to this. This is the full import of this message. What made them different? The two Marys. What made them different? One gave birth to the Savior of the world. And before you tell me, oh, it was just God by, by God's mercy. It was just by God's favor. You know, God just chooses who he wants to choose. Can you just calm down? Nothing just happens. It, with God, nothing just happens. That's a track record for everything. The other one was the first person to see the Savior, to see the risen Savior. If you check their lives very well, you will understand what happened. Look at the other Mary. Because you see, you are transformed. You see, outside of faith, you cannot become anything in God. But even that faith, it is God that has to give you. You can't get faith by yourself. By whatever you do. And it comes as a result of you beholding him. And now, this Mary, early in the morning, just said, I'm, I'm just going to give more time to this thing. Everybody that has given more time to anything, they succeed in it more than everybody. You can write it down. Anybody that has given more time to anything, they have succeeded in that more than every other person. It is written, it is proven psychologically, and it is proven scientifically that people who spend at least four hours on anything, on any feed on earth, they are rated in 10 years, they are rated as one of the best. Four hours. A book of four hours. The law of beholding. This man just said, I'll give some more time. I'll just go and see where they laid the law. Let me just spice up his body. Let me just perform up his body. And since he went there, look at it. She went there. She discovered that the law was not there anymore. She was the first person to see that the law was not there anymore. She ran back to call Peter and John. They came. They came hurriedly. And they left. I'm going to call somebody up here. Because this is how faith developed. I'm going to call somebody up here to give a testimony of what they have been saying in the recent time and the reason why they saw it. And it's a direct answer to the prayer that I've been praying. And then Peter and John came hurriedly. They just said, ah, they have taken him, they have taken him. They just left. They just went back. This guy sat back there and began to check again. Could he be hidden somewhere? Could they have put him somewhere? Could they whatever, whatever? In no time, she became the first person the recent Lord sold up to. There is no way to move the faith of that kind of a person. And name reverberate around the earth like that. See, when you come to the realm of faith, everything is not as normal as if you are God. Listen, Jesus did this equilibrium. With God, all things are possible. To him that believes, all things are possible. That means to him that believes, he is brought to the realm of God. That's the reason why you discover that people who do healings, to them, the healing has taken place. To you, you say, hey, today, oh, God, we, uh, I mean, this pastor will be put to shame. Look at cripple. Look at the kind of cripple they brought here. Oh, I've seen somebody praying before. A man of God. When you get to the realm of faith over anything, you are in that realm like God. You have traversed, you have, tra you have ascended over the level of human. I've seen a man pray for a wound before. We were watching it on the television. This is not, this is not magic. We were watching it. And he was praying pray, a wound that has been open for many years. And the wound, I mean, the, the wound was closing up in the presence of everybody. The wound is not the problem. The faith to do it is the issue. And the faith to do it is not with the man that is confessing. It is with the man that has received that faith. What brings that kind of faith? Creating more time to behold. So Mary saw the risen Lord and she became the first apostle. Because an apostle means somebody who has witnessed the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. That was the first person. In their days, they wouldn't want to call a woman apostle. Especially in Jerusalem, though that will not be killed. But this is the first apostle. And if, it, if, you will, if you will understand what I'm saying, she's the one who replaced Judas. Paul is in the class of his own. Paul led his own. 
to the Gentiles. And Jesus now sent him, go to my brother. Go and tell them, meet me in Galilee. An apostle is a person who has witnessed the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ and has been sent on Orland. A special emissary. How did this marriage start? When the, the sister will be saying, hey, let us impress Jesus. Let us give him food. Let us, Peter will, I mean, Mary will sit down there and Jesus said, Mary has chosen a path that will not be taken away from her. You see? That is the same thing that led her to the point that when Jesus died and everybody has left, he said, I will give more time to see to the end of this thing. I will see how this thing works. And as he kept there, uh, Jesus was not supposed to show up. Could you understand this? Jesus was not supposed to show up. He was not supposed to show up to just all the disciples. That's the reason why he now said, Mary, Mary. He said, Rabboni. He said, please don't touch me. I've not ascended to my father. <laughs> but your problem is just too much. Even in a situation whereby God doesn't want to show anything. For a man who is inquisitive enough and create more time, God will peep out. God, he come here. I've been praying here for some time. And God in, you, was hiding something from me. I didn't know. I've been praying, God, I want to see that in the other church where we were, when we pray, people will see the face of Jesus. They will see this. Somebody will say, I meet with an angel. In the other, and I ask you, God, if you don't want to, if it's not you that is bringing us to this church, don't let us come. And you say, it is you. I say, I want people to be meeting the Lord. That somebody just opened the door. I was praying around it. I said, somebody just opened the door. And they just meet Jesus sitting down. I said, I, I, I want to be one of them. <laughs> I say it's so important. Tell us what you saw and what you did. Don't just tell us what you saw. Tell us what you started doing on your own. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, so, everyone here does what they do. Everyone is on fire and I'm just I'm learning from everybody honestly so just before anything I'm not trying to say that uh, I'm learning from everybody and I love how everyone is growing and it's really encouraging me to you know jack up myself more and everything so um what I do what God laid in my heart some time ago that I that I do is there's just a day in the week that I just I just come here when I know no one's going to be here so I just come here I I just pray I turn off all the lights no lights on just Myself and God and nobody else, the lights are off. I'm just walking around. I'm just praying. I'm just, you know, connecting with God and, you know, just speaking out my heart to him. And I was just doing that. I'm not going to say which day, but the day that I come. I was just doing that. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Um, so um, I was just doing that as normal and just praying. The, the presence of God was here. It was just peaceful, amazing, just beautiful. I was just walking around and... Um, doing the laps that we always do. I was doing it this way, this way. And um, just at that, that, with that entrance, where that um, poster, that powerhouse, God's piece is here. Yeah, so. <laughs> so the poster is obviously located where that window is usually. But as I was walking, as I said, I was going this way. So every time I would pass this way and I was facing that poster, I just began to see um, the face of Jesus just appeared um, it was Jesus on the cross, but it was his face that was magnified. So it was just, it was zoomed into his face. Um, it was very clear. It's nothing that you can say it was, it was the face of Jesus. His face bloody, distorted from the bruising, the beat, every, distort eyes, like everything was just, I knew this was Jesus. But I didn't feel afraid. I was just, I kept praying. I just kept walking. I kept walking. I didn't even say wow jesus i just it was just so normal in that moment in time that i didn't even think too much about it i just said oh jesus oh, i'm continuing that your face is appearing i'm continuing to pray anything then I, I got to the altar and i just i just continued my prayer and i would just keep looking there to see am i really seeing what i'm seeing and it was just there like physical it was just there the face of jesus was just there I, I felt such an, an incredible peace as I was, as I was just, look, I was just like the beholding, you were saying today, beholding, actually, which is funny, but I was just looking at it, I was just staring at it, it didn't shift, it didn't move, it was just there, I was beholding it, I began to just worship, sing to him, worship him, you know, just 
just love him and just appreciate him for everything he did. I was just saying, thank you, Jesus. Look what you did for me. Look what you did for us. I was just worshiping him, appreciating him, thanking him. Um, yeah, so the face that just appeared here, it was just, it was just, I don't know how this can make a face, but there was a, just this triangle. There was just a, 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 a face of Jesus. Yeah, it just appeared. And then every, um, I just continued my prayer, worship God, you know, spend time with him. And then, and then um, every time since that time, I would just look, come back and look like, did I really see what I was seeing? And like, or did I, I can't make it out. Like, there's nothing here that makes out the face of Jesus. So I, I know it was just an encounter for that moment that Jesus was just showing us that I think he's just showing us that he's here with us and he's, you know, he's, he's working in our lives. And yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to share. Glory to God. Now, when he was telling me, I asked him, which part exactly did Jesus show up? He said, we are human beings. Human beings are the Jesus. Human beings are the church. Human beings are the ones that Jesus, let's stand up on our feet. Are the people that, I mean, are the ones that Jesus redeemed. What happened to him? Three things have transpired without you know. Number one, he created time for affection for the Lord. I will give God more time. You could have been using that time to be watching Kim Kandesha or watching something on Instagram or whatever. He just said, some other people, their own is, they walk around. They just, they just shut down their phone and just walk around. See, you cannot be deeply immersed in something you do not create time for. He said, he, he observed the time that nobody will be here, including me. Because he's rare. You just meet me. So he has mastered a particular time that nobody will be here, number one. Number two, he will switch off all the light and he will not start walking around. It's not one day, it's not two days. All of a sudden, Jesus just showed up. You know, the first thing to say is that you did this for me, I am here for you. Do you know the meaning of that? The greatest thing that happens to me as a person is to know that somebody is around me and telling me, David, I love you, I am here for you. It makes the whole world to me. It is not a smart thing for me to detect from somebody that you love me. I'm glued to you. Once I know that there is love from your heart to me, I'm glued to you. And what shows love is time. It is time that proves love. Somebody you love, you give them time. Somebody you don't love, you want to cut the phone off. You don't want to talk to them. Because disinterest is a proof of disenga disengagement. And disengagement is a proof of disinterest. The two of them disable. You can put them around. <laughs> is there vice versa? Are, you, are you listening to what I'm saying? Number two, Jesus was telling me, I am in this church. He sold up from the people. Oh, I thought somebody was going to clap. I know Jesus is in me by faith. But to see him physically, from time to time I tell him, I say, don't you talk. Just say something to somebody. <laughs> Just let me hear something from you. No matter what it is. Even if you say your head is not correct, I say, ah, thank you, Lord, my Lord, my Savior. It has never been correct. <laughs> it, I'm just looking for who will make it correct and thank you that because you have come. Are you listening? Number two is to show that Jesus is saying, I am here with the people. Let the people know. And when, if you have this kind of an encounter, just imagine the encounter of Mary Magdalene that they didn't tell anybody. Encounter increases with use. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. As you are sharing your encounter right now, somebody is going to press deeper. My five guests, including your girl, maybe she did not tell you, I have five guests like that that I put in one group. I call them five growing girl. This holiday, that's the reason why we brought her here. Each one of them has done seven days fasting and prayer without eating. Did your daughter tell you? You know. The five of them, because the thing is contagious. As one started, I think you were the first person to start. Messi O was the first person to start. He just moved around them, the five of them. F faith is contagious. And my daughter is the last one among them, which is the youngest among them. Things have transformed in her life. Spiritually, things have changed. The things of God are contagious. When you are doing it, please... One way, one kind. Let the church of the living God know. If God encounters you, let people know. Let them hear. He will be confirming something. Jesus doesn't soap up. Angels don't so up. Revelations of God don't so up for fun. Something changed in you. I will deal with this on Tuesday. 
you will begin to look like what you look at. If you also begin to see demons, please come for deliverance so that we can obliterate the sight. The power of a look. We will deal with that on Tuesday. I will round off all this thing with the power of a look. You become what you see. God, God didn't just show up. Certain things change in you. Sometimes, let me say this and I close. Sometimes, all the healing anointing of Pastor Chris Yaklome is down to just one revelation. He was doing study in the middle of the night that he would teach on Sunday. And he says he was doing teaching. I mean, he was studying. Jesus just walked in around 3 a.m. Give time to study God's word. Give time to prayers. That is meeting time with Jesus. Nothing gives me greater joy than to see somebody who loves me come around me and we are talking. It's, it's not a smart thing for me. I'm too emotional on the inside of me. I may not show it on the face as such, except from time to time. When you make out time for Jesus, you, 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 your first person in the spirit, where God began to rest on you, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, started when you were studying Bible. You will just be studying Bible like this. Vibration will come upon you uncontrollably. On your own, nobody is laying hands on you. In the church here and other places. There is so much in the presence of God that made the eyes. And Jesus walked into the room with Pastor Christ and said, many of my children are sick and are in the hospital and they are, it's not supposed to be so. Will you heal them for me? <laughs> that is the origin of the multi-billion dollars healing ministry. Certain gift of the spirit, as you saw him, certain gift of the spirit entered. It's not, it's not, it's not a joke. You are in another room. And to see him, now listen to this. To see him, it means you have ascended to a certain level. Because he is here right now. But there are people who see him constantly as he's here. He is here right now. Jesus is here. There's no way you can be growing without Jesus being here. Jesus is here right now. But to, for your eyes to now be open, Paul got to a point in this point. He now said, 14 years ago, I don't know whether in the spirit or in the flesh, I went to the third heaven. I had words that are not good for man to hear with his ear. Paul had gotten to a point where he doesn't know when he goes and when he does not go because he's seen things spiritually every time, even as he's seen human beings. His ascension, his spiritual ascension. And it is a little sambala here, a little sambala here, a little prayer here, a little walking to the sea to pray, a little standing up to pray. Let me tell you this truth. Do you want to hear this truth? Nobody has power for anything spiritual. All of us just beg God. You didn't hear what I said. Nobody has power for anything spiritual. All of us just beg God. He is the fullness of him that filleth all in all. If he does not fill us, we are gone. My sister was talking to somebody who, who she is supposed to be working with. And as he was talking, she now said, ah, please don't mention it in the church. Don't mention it in the church. I said, I've had. Just let me know first. As he was talking with the person, he said, this person doesn't look bad. You remember? <laughs> you listen to what I'm saying? People you will say holy sister, holy whatever. All of us, it is us we engage his presence. He fills us with his strength. We are the weakest of all the creation of God. Animals have more power than us. Except when the hand of the Lord rests upon us. And it's a little sambala here, a little sambala here. We finish the church right now, everybody is going. Somebody is rushing to the house, not because you want to go and cook, but to just have a time of serenity between you and God. You want to watch again what has been said in the church, and you want to take some moment to pray, instead of just talking around the street, like a loose head. Some other people, we, wait, we just watch and see that everybody has gone, they stay in their car. They say, where are you going? They say, I'm just thinking of something. As soon as everybody goes, say, give me the key, and they enter. That is how Joshua was made. He didn't even know when he has received the power to lead the children of Israel. Anytime Moses was in the temple, Joshua will follow. The presence of God will come over, over Moses. Joshua also will be there. One day, God just spoke to Moses. I found somebody because he has been receiving of me. He can stand to give of me. May God find you worthy like that.